Yebo, 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 welcome to Watch Me Build It. Today we're having a double feature. We're gonna be doing an unboxing and then a build on a Parnas Pilots watch. The Parnas Pilots watch I bought from the Grivo store. Now, as far as I can understand, Grivo do a customized sunburst blue dial for an ordinary Parnas Pilots watch. I've bought the watch for a friend of mine. I'm gonna modify it for him and that's what you're gonna see on the video. I'm gonna put it into a brass case that takes the same movement. You will likely hear some thunder in the background. You can see the wind blowing behind me. We have a high felt thunderstorm that's about to land. So come, watch me unbox it and watch me build it. Wristwatch check, Romega Ocean Master. One of my favorite pieces. Glinting away in the sunlight and I'm really enjoying it. Right, here we go. An outside in review of the Parnas Pilot's Watch. Beginning with the strap. It's it's a decent quality leather strap. It's um double and even triple ply possibly at the end over there. The stitching is neat. The clasp The clasp is nicely done. It's got this step down that's so typical of the early pilot's watches. Um, a fair amount of adjustment. I'm wearing it on this hole over here on a 7 inch wrist. So you could probably go to 6.5 inches. Um, maybe up to 8 on this particular strap. It's a nice strap. It's not a very pliable leather. I'm not sure even. It is stamped as genuine leather not sure how long it'll last but it's a decent strap so I'll do the scoring at the end but um yeah I would as, as far as straps go I wouldn't I wouldn't give this more than a halfway score maybe five that's about all I'd give it then coming up to the the movement itself this is possibly one of the um, one of the best features of this watch is the open case back in this beautiful ST36 movement by Seagull. You can see the beautiful escapement spinning away over there. You can see the jewels in all of their splendor. You can see those blue screws. It's really a stunning, stunning movement. Um, and simplicity itself, um, timekeeping on these is average. Um, and also, it is a hand-winding movement. I'd like you to hear something. Listen, I want you to see the ratchet while I wind, but... It is a very audible wind, very loud. You know that you're working with a machine. These ST36s um, are based on the ETA movements, which themselves came initially from pocket watches. And you can, you can see that translates into the size of the watch. In terms of movement, I really like this one. I think I'm going to go um, 8 out of 10 here. My movements are weighted to 20. So I would, I would go 16 because it really is. It's something that I enjoy tremendously. Very simple, very straightforward, but also very beautiful. Case and finishing. Now, this is where I think this watch really does itself favors. Look at the, the polish on the underside of the lugs. The case back, obviously a, a transparent, unbranded case back. And then look at the brush as we come over. I'm going to turn this the other way around. The brushing, just linear brushing on the case side. What may not be very um, obvious on this specific video is there is a lot of elegance in the way that they do this particular lug. There's a bit of a a dimple in it um, it's just a very well finished um, the, the the shaping of the case and as we come around to the top of the case first of all again very beautifully polished nice transitions over there but have a look at this bezel can you see that concave finish that concave surface you see how nicely it transitions into the the, the crystal 
I really think there's beautiful detailing over here. So this case, this case I'm going to give a great score. I'm going to go with 9 on this case. I really like this case. Then I know I do bezel and crystal. That's um, my dive watch finishing, but uh, scoring, but this is not a dive watch. As I've already said, I, I really like this bezel. The crystal itself, you can see, is a double domed. It is a sapphire crystal. A stunning, stunning, stunning thing. So bezel and crystal, I'm going to score highly. I'm going to score eight as well. Then we come down to the hands and the face. Look at this. Look at that sunburst. I just think it's one of the most spectacular colors. It's it's purple, isn't it? It's or mauve or uh, violet. Maybe violet's the, the right na name over there. Markings are beautiful. You can see they're all applied. Can you see you can see in this contrasting light as the sun is rising over there the beautiful relief on those. Hands are nice. They actually have a it's like a gunmetal grey or a smoky grey border. They're not silver. Um, legibility on, on this setup, obviously. I mean, this is like a wall clock on your wrist. There's nothing illegible about this particular face, style and hand arrangement. And then what I really love is this little red 60 on the second wheel at the 9 o'clock position. I just, it's beautiful. It really is stunning. So hands and dial again. I'm going to score very highly over here. I can't recall if it's a weighted score or not. But but hands and dial, I'm going to go for 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 top marks, except for the loon. <laughs> so I would be giving a 9 out of 10 on the hands and dial. I have to mark them down. This loom should glow like a torch, right? I mean, there's just loom plots all over the place. But the loom is the most disappointing part of this entire watch. It's it's a very poor effort at best. So I have to mark it down to an 8 out of 10 um, on the loom. Um, I don't have my weighting with me right now. So I'm going to convert that to a weighted score when I do the, the final scoring. And then obviously we need to do dimension. Now of course being a pilot's watch it's going to measure large. So there we go. Across the case. 44 mil, lug to lug an enormous 51.8, thickness a slender 11.9, that's because it's a hand winding movement, it's the ST36, there's no rotor to contend with, uh, so a nice slender movement. Lug width 21.822, that's a little bit of a surprise, let's just check the strap as well, there we go. 22 mil at the lug on the strap. So I think this is possibly one of one of the more difficult portions of this watch. It is a pilot's watch. It's true to form in being a larger watch, but it wears a little bit large on the wrist. Now, I've, I've bought this for a friend of mine, and I'm going to do a build, and, and he's a large guy. I mean, if you think Hamish from Braveheart, you've, you've got the size of my friend. So I think it's going to be fine on his wrist. I'm going to pop it on mine now and you'll see it's, it's less than ideal on my wrist. There it is on my wrist. Um, the crown is quite a, a piece of steel. <laughs> you can see how nicely, uh, nice and slender it weighs. But you can see it, it is that, that lug to lug is, is kind of at the limits of what my wrist can take. It's not, it's not ungainly. And I have been wearing this quite a bit, just so that I could do the review. Can you see that AR on the crystal while I'm doing that? It's a blue AR coating. But anyway, guys, um, there, there it is. That's the uh, the Parnas Pilot's watch um, with a bespoke dial. And um, I really, really do like this watch a great deal. That's me, Schwarzkopfing, Schwarzkopf or Francoing. <laughs> just having a bit of fun.
So, what do you think? I must say, I really like the Pilot's Watch. Um, the silver case that came from the Grivo store, it's a standard Parnas Pilot's Watch case. I love the elegance and the finesse on the design. I love the way there were tiny little dimples where the lugs moved off of the case into the lug. I love the way that the bezel had a concave surface to it. I love the, the double domed sapphire on the front really thought it was a very elegant case. By contrast, the brass case was a lot more um, tool-like, a lot more functional. It had flatter sides, sharper edges. It, um, it does look like something that is a lot more maritime, something that was built for purpose. Um, I like the fact that this brass is going to patina over time. And what I also like about it is the brown strap, brass case, blue dial. I think that color combination works very well. Overall, I think the watch is a little bit large for my liking. It's just under 45 mil without that massive crown. The crown all by itself is probably four millimeters. I haven't measured it yet, but it is an enormous crown. I think it's gonna work well for my friend. My friend is a very tall guy, and um, I'm really hoping that he enjoys it for his birthday. Thank you for watching me unbox it and watching me build it. Please remember, like, subscribe, Click the bell icon and you'll get notifications every time I post a new message. Guys, until the next episode, watch me build it one more time.